everyone, and welcome to The Roundabout. I'm your host, Katyuska Guzman, and joining me today is the wonderful Kelsey Carter, our special guest host, Sherry Gatz, and the one and only Nadia Cruz. We have a jam-packed show for you today. We talk to graduating seniors about their thoughts and feelings on graduating. We have an on-location interview with high school teacher and WP alumni, Robert Hittinger, and we sit down with musical guest Will Wood from Will Wood and the Tapeworms to talk about his life as a musician. But first, it's time for some hot topics. So Nadia, what do you have for us? So Bruce Springsteen canceled all of his shows in North Carolina because of that new law that dictates what bathroom people should use. Like if it's not on your birth certificate, like what sex you are, then you need to go to that bathroom that was assigned to you at birth. So is somebody at the door saying, you can go here, you can go there? I don't know, but he took offense to that and he canceled all of his shows in protest to that. I think it was a little overboard. Right. I can't say that I disagree with the law even though I do have, you know, friends that are transgender. I don't know how you ladies feel about it. I'm still kind of like... Mixed feelings. Uh, I, exactly. I feel like, um, you know, I have a family member that's in transition. So I don't know. Um, was a female now, a male. So I'm assuming that, you know, we call him he. So he goes to men's bathroom. From the outside, you can't tell. Right. So how did, like, you know what I mean? Like, what do you do then? But as far as him canceling the concert, I don't know. I think that was a stretch. I think it's a, it's a thing of boundaries. I don't think that um, there's much respect for what people would like, but as a mother of a six-year-old child, I send my son into female bathrooms all the time. And like, if I can't go in with him because I have packages or whatnot, I send him in and I send him into the women's bathroom. Now, I don't know if it goes for children or if it's just adults, but I'm gonna send him into the bathroom if I can't go with him until whatever age I decide is appropriate for him to go by himself. Well, I get what you're saying, but um, trying to switch the topic on bathrooms. I was um, traveling the other day and I saw a protesting sign and it was in front of a pet store. So I'm like, pet store? So you know, I had to look and see what's going on. <laughs> so 60 puppies, little puppies were crammed into cages like overnight at this pet store and it was like 30 degrees outside. Oh, because they were in a, in a van. They were in a van, yeah. So it's like, how can you do that? So not everyone wants the store to be shut down. What do you guys think? Like, should it be shut down? Should I, it? I think it should be shut down. I think that that's something that it would be under like animal cruelty. I, yeah. yeah, that definitely is a animal cruelty. And like as a dog owner myself, like there's a lot of shelters and there's other places where, I mean, you don't necessarily have to keep them, but you don't have to expose them to such cruelty. I mean, Sherry, what do you think? I feel like PETA is definitely on the march there already, if not <laughs> as we're speaking now. Um, I've, it's just not right. You can't leave cute little puppies out there like that. Like, the ugly puppies. Bring them to right. my yeah. house. <laughs> I will take your puppies in. You have puppies, bring them to me. I will keep them with me. It's okay. <laughs> but um, you said in your travels, in your travels, did you ever think maybe perhaps you had a car that could maybe drive itself? I know maybe you were sitting there I, thinking, possibly. I, I, I would. I would definitely like a car to drive me. I, <laughs> I, I have such a busy schedule. I'm usually tired. I would definitely like to hit a button and say, take me home, Siri. <laughs> Well, recently, um, the car company Tesla um, has installed an auto autopilot system for their cars, um, letting the car actually drive itself. Um, there's been like lots of videos surfacing. People have been seeing it. It's become um, like all on news feed, things like that. Um, do you guys think a pilot is like a good feature? Do you think the autopilot might be bad? I mean, I think that it's expected to come with how the world is, you know, everything's right. technology. Um, I would love to have that. However, I'm very scary. So I just think that something will go wrong. Like it's a computer at the end of the day. But, but I think this car was designed to help protect you. Like you're, if you're in an accident, the car helps you prevent the accident. And what if it doesn't? What if something goes wrong? What if? Just well, that's like, what you take the wheel. Jesus. Well, there's, cars that come, <laughs> there's cars that come with the automatic brakes already. Yeah. Right. But like, I can honestly tell you there would be nothing better than to stop relying on a designated driver <laughs> right? when you go out to have a or drink or two. Exactly. I mean, I think it should be able to have both where you can drive it yourself. And then, you know, once you've had a couple of glasses of wine, because, you know, one glass leads to another leads to another. If, it, if it's to prevent you from like losing your life, I think that it's it's very beneficial. I mean, unless the car goes haywire, then yeah, it's I just uh, hear a lawsuit. I, I think know. the innovation I just, of it all. 
just the innovation on its own, just to be able to have that. I would try it out. I would let, let it take me around the corner. Well, <laughs> around the corner. speaking of things that won't be going around the corner, <laughs> uh, American Idol, finally, for the love of whomever is <laughs> no. on Fox. Yes, Ooh, no. it's over. It's done. Thank you. 15 seasons. Lord. 15 seasons of people singing and other people <laughs> picking them, and it's over. So they aired their last episode, and... A lot of people were crying and emotional and like, oh, You're not sad. Why? They no. missed their chance? I'm not sad at all. I think I went through four seasons and all I did was watch the auditions and the final I show. I love the auditions. But I'm not going to lie. I think we found is the so most many entertaining. amazing artists on the show. I think it was something to look forward to every week. I'm not into it. I like the panel when they like go off. That's well, <laughs> let me tell you, I think there's definitely going to be a continuation because he said, We'll see you until next. Like he, he kind of left like that cliffhanger. So I think mm -hmm. we're definitely gonna have something coming up. So don't get too excited. No, there's I so need many that other shows though, like contests yeah. and like The Voice and you know such things. So I don't know. I'm not really. Well, I feel like after Simon and Randy exactly and, uh, and Paula, Paula Abdul left, it's just like, what is American Idol? These like American Idol was so soft. great because that Simon was, was so like that was just. Brutally awful. Like, however he would say, like, I'm it. terrible Simon impersonator, but it was just so much. I was watching auditions the other day at the radio station, and they were just saying, like, I love how Simon would say that you have got to be the worst singer in America. <laughs> like, that, that's me. <laughs> but Sorry. that's it for our hot topics. When we come back, we hit the campus to talk to our seniors about upcoming graduation. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Roundabout. It's that time of the year again when the school year comes to a close and thousands of seniors will graduate. But before they walk across the stage and get their diplomas, the crew and I went around campus to ask seniors what they will miss most about William Patterson and what they think the future holds for them. How do you feel about graduation coming up so soon? Are you a bit overwhelmed, relaxed? Um, right now it's a little overwhelming just because it's still so much to do. Like it's not just an easy, breeze through to graduation is still a lot of work so right now it's a bit overwhelming but I'm still excited. Definitely excited looking forward to the next chapter moving on at the same time. It's bittersweet though. I came here in September of 2014 majoring in broadcast journalism and I have to say I'm absolutely happy that I'm finally graduating and now I can move on. What are going to be your fondest memories about being here at William Patterson? Um, well, I was involved with a lot of clubs and a lot of organizations on campus, so just the experiences I had through that, uh, Sable, Black Student Union. Taking part in the TV club and also being part of the club, YDS, Young Democratic Socialists. I was actually their secretary. Just meeting a whole bunch of different new people. Um, I can say I had my most fun my senior year because that's when I opened out of my shell and met a whole bunch of new people. What is going to be your fondest memory or what are you going to miss about William Patterson? Uh, definitely, I think for me, the access to all the learning tools we have here. I'm a media production major and some of the control room, the studio, it's unbelievable what they have to offer. So that's definitely going to be something I miss. I guess just walking around the school, again, being part of the TV club, taking part in activities. Um, I have to say I found some of the professors very helpful. Probably welcome back week. Just because you come back from summer, everyone's here, and you can see all your friends, and there's different events for us to do, so I'm going to miss that. Well, what do you plan on doing after graduation? Well, I just actually applied for um, a position over at Apple in Silicon Valley to work out there in California. Hopefully to find something in my field. Again, um, as a broadcast journalism major, I'm hoping to maybe go work for one of the big media outlets such as NBC, ABC, or Telemundo. I have a couple internships that I'm working in now, so hopefully they'll turn into a full-time position. Hopefully finding a job where that's yet to be seen but the plan is to go get a job in the real world that would be nice well congratulations on all your future endeavors and congratulations on graduating thank you very much
Speaking of graduating from William Patterson, when we come back, we have an interview with Robert Henninger, a William Patterson alum and current Wayne Hills High School teacher. Don't go anywhere. Can't see your favorite WPTV shows because of class, work, sleep, or being stuck in a well? Well, no problem. You can find all your favorite WPTV shows online, on demand, on the student video galleries at WPUNJ.edu. Welcome back to The Roundabout. We went on location to Wayne Hills High School for a sit-down interview with William Patterson alumni and high school teacher Robert Hittinger. Hi, my name is Robert Hittinger. I'm a first-year social studies teacher here at Wayne Hills High School, and I teach US 1 and US 2. US 1 is sophomores and US 2 is juniors. I've always wanted to become a teacher since I was young, probably around first or second grade. And with each grade, I thought that was the grade I, I finally wanted to teach. Uh, my mom had been a teacher since 1999. She went back, got her master's uh, in teaching and education for business in the high school. And as I got older and older then, once I got to the high school level, that was the level that I felt I was most comfortable with. I enjoyed t uh, teaching the kids and discussing why more than the what. Right now, I'm currently involved in several different extracurricular activities. I do sports commentating for fall, winter, and spring sports, everything from boys and girls soccer to lacrosse to basketball and hockey. Uh, I also MC and host different functions at the high school, especially the pep rally that they have annually every year. I think the best thing about teaching is when you can bring a lesson that the students have never heard of before. Getting them to analyze and getting them to make that then connection to the real world, preparing them to become voters in a democratic society. I think that's the most rewarding thing, is that you're seeing, it's not necessarily how well they did on a test, but it's seeing how well, they, how well they're using their critical thinking skills. Well, William Patterson has a terrific education program. I felt that they prepared me for this field extremely well. There is a lot of focus on minorities and a lot of focus on the struggles that we see, especially in this area in New Jersey. So uh, William Patterson does a terrific job by both blending, for, for me, the education and focusing on not as much the material, but how to interact with students, how to deal with students of different learning abilities, and then also blending in uh, what we had for our subject, which mine was history, and preparing us for a wide variety of courses we may teach. I don't think I'd be as effective of as a teacher as I am if not for William Patterson. There are other great schools in the area, but of course William Patterson has always been known, before it was even a university, uh, as a school for teaching. So I, I owe William Patterson a lot, and I also owe the professors themselves, and my advisor especially, a lot in guiding me with how was I going to go about becoming a teacher, what classes would I need to take that would be the most useful. So overall, William Patterson was a great four years for me. Uh, I had met a lot of friends, was able to learn a lot about both my profession and just history in general, which I enjoy in, in my spare time. And I have to say thank you to William Patterson for preparing me to be a responsible individual that's now going to be functioning in a democratic society. Coming up, we have an exclusive interview with WP student and singer-songwriter Will Wood from Will Wood and the Tapeworms to talk about his life as a musician. Don't go anywhere. You're watching WPTV. And just remember, WPTV is watching you too. <laughs> You're watching WPTV. <clears throat> you 
You're watching The Roundabout, and joining us today is the multi-talented Will Wood. He is a student here at William Patterson, a singer, songwriter, and leader of the band Will Wood and the Tapeworms. Welcome to The Roundabout, Will Wood. Th th thank you. How are you doing? Doing all right, doing, uh, doing well, doing okay, uh, managing, getting by, all that. Love this outfit. Mm, cool. <laughs> Are you Sorry. okay? Did yeah, you? No, I'm just a little nervous. I, I, I get this way sometimes. It's just nothing. It's fine. There's nothing to be nervous about. Okay. So tell me, um, what was a defining moment in your life? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm cool. it's fine. Keep going. Um, what was a defining moment in your life that made you decide that you wanted to be an artist and play music? Well, I, 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 I never like had like like, I mean, I've had like phases and stuff, but like uh, whenever I start something, I have this habit of just getting sucked into it. And so when I was like 13 or 14, I had an episode of uh, hallucinations that um, I had no choice but to like, you know, freak out over. And so I was like, I know what to do. I'll write a song about it. I don't know why that's the, 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 the path that I took, but it happened. And I wrote this terrible, awful song. And I was like, this is a great song. And I, I never really stopped doing that. And so now I just, you know, I write terrible songs and go, this is a great song. And feel better about what you I wrote about. You actually don't write terrible songs. You write amazing songs. I went on your YouTube. Ah! <laughs> and your page. And it's great music. Have you ever taken any music courses or anything like that? I uh, I studied uh, classically when I was really little, but I mostly just faked knowing how to read music. I kind of just, uh, I've taken some classes, but I don't really like uh, the way music education happens because it's kind of like, um, uh, it's a little structured. When you taught it to play music as, as a child, did you have anyone that inspired you, anyone that you looked up to? I saw you have like 12,000 views on one of your videos, which is amazing. Yeah, uh, I, I really like, uh, I, I, I really like, um, I, 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 I like some of like the, uh, the avant-garde and the- Very uh, avant-garde. And the, uh, the experimental side of, um, uh, uh, rock music and related things. Uh, I, li I listen to a lot of Bobby Vinton. Bobby Vinton is one of my favorites. You know, Blue Velvet, Mr. Lonely. You know, that was, those are the days, man, when things were just like simpler and you didn't have to like, you could just sing a song about being in love with someone. It didn't have to be filled with poetry. You didn't have to be all like, you know, I don't know. I, 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 it's, it's just like, you could just say words. Yeah. But I think that's what you do now. You say words, you recite poems. Yeah, that is that is what I do. But, you know, it would be great to be able to, um, you know, just, I don't know. I saw Bobby Vinton. He plays a mean clarinet. Great polka stuff. Fantastic. When you're on set, what do you think about? What's going through your mind when you're on set, when you're playing, before you go on a show? I, um, I don't really think very verbally when that when I'm in that state it's all like um, like like images uh, and not even quite images somewhere between an image and a sound will pop into my head and it will symbolize something else and that symbol will uh, connect to another one and I'll end up in this like weird almost you know meditative altered state and uh, you know I guess that's kind of what happens to me before I see patterns in this carpet that I'm certain are not really there. You're not on acid, are you? No, not, <laughs> not, not right now. <laughs> Going back to the 12,000 followers, some, being successful in the music industry is very hard. What do, you, what do you think has helped you succeed? Like, what, what do you think sets you apart? Because there's so many people trying to do this. Um, I actually try. I know that sounds weird, but bear with me for a second. I think a lot of people um, they, they, uh, they believe what they're told, the notion of, of, uh, um, uh, of how it's, it's hard or impossible to make it in music, how it's just a dream or it's just a pipe dream or whatever, what have you. And I don't think that's the case at all. Um, I kind of, I guess what, I, what I'm saying is that like you have two options. You have either believe in yourself and risk failure or don't believe in yourself and guarantee failure. And, uh, so I chose the former, and I think, uh, um, you know, I don't know how successful I am or will be, but uh, at least I have a chance, which people who refuse to let themselves try never get. You understand? Does that make Was sense? Was there any time in your life where you didn't believe in yourself and you felt like you couldn't do this? Yeah. Um, every now and again, I, I feel that way. 
Um, once in a blue moon, I, uh, I, I feel like. I, 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 a friend of mine put it, a friend of mine who's also a songwriter, um, uh, put it as being that like the hardest part of being a songwriter is uh, in between the songs where you're just kind of like, did I lose it? Am I ever going to do another one again? Is it ever going to be good again? And um, so uh, every couple of days, yeah. Um, well, that's amazing. You seem like you're doing an amazing job. Thank you. I'm definitely going to go check out one of your shows because I checked out your YouTube and your page, and it looks awesome. I, so I'm thank, glad. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you so much. To learn more about Will Wood and his band, you can find them online at willwoodandthetapeworms.com. You can also, also follow, follow them on, on Twitter, Twitter Tumblr, Tumblur, Facebook, Facebook YouTube, YouTube, and, and Instagram. Instagram. When we come back, Will is going to perform one of his newest songs right here live in our studio, so stick around. We'll be right back. Thank you. You're very welcome. I like this. Also, might be a home. Here at WPTV, we put the funk back in college television. Hey, wait a minute. There's no funk in college television. Welcome back. For the first time anywhere, here's Will Wood performing his original song, Normal. I was delivered, holding scissors, I lived deliberately, I'm a quitter and a winner anyway, cause I never agreed to participate in this game, won't follow my dreams, cause they all got me waking up screaming, I can let them go free, after all there's no high in team, and I'd rather be normal, yes so normal, I suggest that we keep this informal, And to be normal, to be normal Well, I bet that's the least that I want you To be normal, oh, in a way I couldn't be Yeah, come on, come on and love me normally If I could live in third person Well, I don't think life would be much worse than it is in the current tense presently Listen Ending with question marks or dot dot dot. Is it courageous or escapist to leave the quarantine when you're contagious? It may just be a cold. And besides, I don't want to get old, yeah. I drank myself to death to be the afterlife of the party when the after party came. I was rolling in my grave and I ran the normal, yes, so normal. Suggest that we keep this informal Cause a normal human being would need To pretend to be normal, to be normal When I pass the least that I owe ya To be normal in a way I couldn't be Yeah, come on, come on and love me normally the time of the show I'd like to talk to my audience and I'd like to tell them I want you to look into the eyes of that beautiful woman or man or neither or in between that you brought with you tonight and I want you to tell them how you really feel that you love 
love the way they sew gracefully and seamlessly like a dream blend into their surroundings. Never sticking out like the sore thumb they so certainly could be if they didn't have a can What's the word I'm looking for? Compassion, decency, common sense. Common sense to... that was cut out for us at the beginning of our lives. We really, really do. And look into their eyes and tell them, I love you, I love you for, for who everybody else is. Man, you better have one hell of a plan. Oh, cause I'd rather be normal. You're so normal. I suggest that we keep this informal. Cause a normal human being and what it need. Not all to pretend to be normal. To be normal. When I best believe that I owe ya to be normal. Amazing. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode. I'd like to thank our wonderful guest, Will Wood, and Robert Hittinger, our guest, Sherry Getz, and to all the graduating seniors we interviewed. I'd also like to give a big thanks to our executive producer, Loretta McLaughlin Vignier, our studio manager, Al Clark, my co-host, and our amazing crew. We'll see you all next time on The Roundabout. <laughs>